We will now discuss more details about TCP, and in this video we will talk about the anatomy of a TCP segment. Ready? By the way, you can watch our previous video, which explains TCP and UDP in general, and the role of the transport layer. A TCP segment is composed of a TCP header and a data payload. The TCP header contains information that is used to manage the TCP connection. The header can be 20 bytes, and if it contains options it can reach 60 bytes. The data payload contains the actual data being transmitted over the TCP connection. The TCP segment is encapsulated in an IP packet, which is then encapsulated in a link layer frame for transmission over the network. Now let's go deeper into the TCP header and see what it's made of. As discussed earlier, the header is a minimum of 20 bytes, and can reach a maximum of 60 bytes if we have options. We will explain more in details about the different fields in our future videos. For now we will quickly go through them. The source port and the destination port are each 16 bits, which means they range for 0 to 65525. The source port field in the TCP header specifies the port number used by the sender of the TCP segment, while the destination port field specifies the port number used by the intended recipient of the TCP segment. These port numbers enable devices to distinguish between multiple TCP connections running simultaneously over a single IP address. For example, if a client sends an HTTP request to a server over a TCP connection, the client might use a randomly assigned source port number like 60,000, while the server would use the well-known port number for HTTPS traffic, which is port 443. Sequence number is a way of numbering and keeping track of order of segments sent. On the other hand, acknowledgement number is used by the receiver to inform the sender which packets have been received and which packets are still outstanding. As you can see, both these numbers can be very large, since their size is 32 bits. Again, there will be a dedicated video for these. Header length, or data offset, represents the size of the TCP header in 32-bit words, ranging from a minimum of 5, 20 bytes, to a maximum of 15, 60 bytes. It is used by the receiver to accurately identify the location of the data within the TCP segment. After data offset, three bits are reserved for future use, which are not currently assigned to any specific functionality and must be set to zero. These bits are reserved for potential use in future extensions or updates to the TCP protocol. Next, we have nine bit flags, each of which performs a specific function. Nonce sum is a security feature that was proposed but it is still experimental and not currently used in most TCP implementations. The idea was to make it more difficult for attackers to guess the next sequence number by adding a random nonce value. However, TLS is now more commonly used to provide secure communication over TCP. The congestion window reduced flag in the TCP header is used to notify the receiver that the sender has reduced its congestion window in response to an ECN message. The ECN echo flag is used to inform the sender that the receiver supports the ECN protocol. The ECN protocol is used to prevent congestion by allowing devices to signal congestion before it occurs. The ECN field is a 2-bit field located in the TCP header options field. The ACK flag is used to indicate that the acknowledgement number field in the TCP header is valid. It is set to 1 when the receiver has received a segment from the sender. Now let's move to the push flag. TCP uses buffers in both directions. The sender's TCP buffer holds the data to be transmitted to the receiver, and the receiver's TCP buffer holds the data that has been received but not yet processed by the receiving application. These buffers do more harm than good when dealing with real-time applications which require that data be transmitted as quickly as possible such as Telnet you would have to type over a thousand characters before the first packet would make it to the remote device. With TCP's push feature, the sending application informs TCP that data should be sent immediately, and the receiving host will know that the data should be processed immediately. TCP reset is used to forcibly terminate a connection without completing the normal shutdown process. When a device sends a reset packet to another device, it indicates that it wants to abruptly terminate the connection and that it does not want to receive any more data. The other device immediately terminates the connection and frees up any resources associated with it. It is commonly used in error and exception handling such as a network failure or a closed port. 
the synchronize flag is used to synchronize the sequence number between the sender and the receiver. It is used to establish a connection between two devices. We will see it when discussing the handshake process. The finish flag is used to indicate that the sender has finished sending data. It is used to terminate a connection between two devices. Fin is used for a graceful shutdown of the connection, while TCP reset is used for an abrupt termination of the connection. Window size refers to the amount of data that can be sent across a TCP connection without receiving an acknowledgement from the receiver. We will talk more about it in the flow control video. Now let's move to the checksum. When a sender sends a TCP packet, it computes a checksum over the entire packet, including the header and the data payload. The checksum is a mathematical calculation that generates a fixed size value that represents the contents of the packet. The sender then includes this checksum value in the packet header. When the receiver receives the packet, it also computes the checksum over the entire packet and compares the result with the checksum value included in the packet header. If the two values match, it means that the packet has not been corrupted during transmission, and the receiver can safely process the packet. If the checksum values do not match, it means that the packet has been corrupted, and the receiver will discard the packet and request the sender to resend it. Last but not least, the options field provides additional information about the packet or the connection. For example maximum segment size, window scale, timestamps, congestion control and others. So that's the TCP header, it provides control information necessary for reliable transmission of data by defining key fields. Let's move on to the next video.